Hello and welcome to a brand new edition of Inside Out on the Road, a show where we focus on individual stocks with in-depth analysis. We deep dive into financials and we also tell you about the key risk and triggers going forward. But let's get straight to our first talk on the show today. My colleague Sonal gets us a very special deep dive on Managar Gas. If you are living in Mumbai, you definitely must have come across Mahanagar Gas's CNG stations and seen domestic connections in your own house for gas as well. So that is the company we are going to be talking about today. It is the sole authorized distributor of CNG and PNG in Mumbai adjoining areas and Raigarh as well. Now Mahanagar Gas, if we look at the numbers, it has 313 CNG stations, 2.17 million domestic gas connections, around 4,500 uh, industrial customers and a pipeline of 6,535 kilometers. Um, company did a capex of 580 crore rupees in FY23. They plan to look at the same amount in the next two financial years as well for their growth plans. The red revenue CAGR has been strong in last five years at around 22.5% and profit growth in the same period has been to the tune of 10%. Uh, now, the important metric to look at when we track city as distribution companies is EBITDA per SCM or EBITDA per unit of volume sold by the company. For Mahanagar Gas, it was at a record high level in FY21 at around 11.5 rupees per SCM. It did see a decline from those levels, but those were the normalized levels. Because remember, gas costs, they were at a record high. That is their input as well. Now, what is the outlook going forward? How does this business really work? How do you get your gas in your cars and in your homes? We'll understand the business with the management. Let's go. I can show you around some to take a deep dive into Mahanagar Gas, understand everything about the business and no other than Mr. Ashu Singhal, who is the MD of the company, joining us now on the show. Mr. Singhal, it's a pleasure to have you with us on Inside Out. And you know, this is a product or a service which everyone uses on a daily basis. So it's only fair to tell them where does it really come from. And on the show, that's exactly what we plan to do. We want to understand what is the business of Mahanagar Gas. So let's get it started now, sir. Uh, can you explain it to us? So many technical words, spot LNG. APM gas pricing, CNG, PNG. What is exactly the business? What is the input here? How do you source it? Um, how do you price it? What is the cost involved in your business? Thank you so much for uh, inviting me for the conversation today. See, the business is very simple. We procure gas, right, from ONGC, is the primary supplier, and Reliance, BP, and other domestic player. Since the domestic gas is not completely available, so we import it also, which is called LNG, the liquefied natural gas. So we procure it, then we distribute it in a city gas distribution network. So we have to keep uh, safety utmost because that is the prime importance we are dealing with the public. So the we do some processing like compressed natural gas, right? CNG is a normal term which I think yeah. most of us are aware of. of. <laughs> so we compress it to around 220 kg per centimeter square. And then it is filled into the cylinder and used as a vehicle. CNG is one segment. The other is domestic uh, pipe natural gas, which we call as PNG, which is a substitute to LPG. So LPG goes to the rural area and domestic buildings get uh, buildings or other households get PNG. Third is industrial and commercial. You see restaurants, you see industries. So all those are our customers. Okay, so exactly that was my next question. So many customers. But when we talk about the sourcing mix, it's a mix of both domestic gas or imported LNG as well. Is domestic gas only a, uh, used for CNG? Like, can you interchange the usage of LNG or domestic gas for different segments? Because usually, when industrial comes to mind, we always talk about LNG. How does that work? Yeah. See, the government wants to prioritize certain sectors, which we call as uh, priority sectors. Primarily, that means pipe natural gas and compressed natural gas. And if you see on cost basis, the cost to serve to a PNG segment is very huge. Almost 25,000 per connection we incur, and we are allowed to charge only 5,000. So to compensate for that, government said that, okay, we'll give you the cheapest gas. And the cheapest gas as of now is domestic gas, because LNG is traditionally costly. 
barring a few period most of the, most of the time it is much costly than the domestic gas so in the wisdom of government of india earlier the priority was different they used to give fertilizer followed by power followed by lpg and then city gas distribution but they found that cgd is the upbringing area it is come more financial institutes from the across the world is, are coming up so they decided to change reverse this order maybe 7 8 years back they made cgd as the first priority then lpg fertilizer and then uh, other sectors okay so it's interchangeable lng can also be used to start to yeah, now uh, the other aspect of it sorry i mean no, i mean bit longer yes, the other part is that domestic gas was not sufficient to meet the complete requirement of priority sector so what they did was last quarter's consumption will be prorated to the next quarter and then they see whatever is available in the kitty is given balance is to be reported so around 90% we get the domestic gas and balance 10% for the priority sector is met through the imports so what is the split in volumes in cng png and industrial volumes right now around 3.45 mm cmd million standard cubic meter per day is our consumption out of it around 72% is cng so 2.7 and 0.45 0.45 around 0.4 and 0.4 is uh, png and 0.4 is industry and commercial so the other term that i wanted to understand was exclusivity of your infrastructure for mumbai it's still 2030 uh, in its adjoining areas and 2040 for raigad what does exclusivity of infrastructure mean is it connected in any way to the open access norms that had come out uh, by pngrb see exclusivity when you speak there are two types of exclusivity one is infrastructure exclusivity or we can say physical exclusivity uh, other is marketing exclusivity so 2030 and 2040 numbers when we are saying they are infrastructure exclusivity which keeps on a rolling basis i mean if in mumbai the roads are created just for an example there is no other party who is going to create a road parallel to the existing road same with pipelines also if the pipeline infrastructure is laid there is no nobody else who is going to lay the same infrastructure again in the crowded areas so what uh, regulation says is that if a company is given the license and they create the infrastructure they have the right to create the infrastructure the marketing exclusivity is after 8 years any other party can use that infrastructure by paying the tariff okay so road is like a tolling road yeah <laughs> you have the road anybody can use it they pay the tolling charges for it okay so, so that is marketing exclusivity which is 8 years for uh, so basically if you put out a pipeline today after 8 years somebody else can come and use it and they have to pay a tariff to you suppose i create a capacity of 100 million so only 25 will be used for the third party access which is called an open access oh, okay exactly that is the simplest way you could actually explain <laughs> open access other than using those technical words which were there yeah, in the yeah. document right um so this is about open access so are your is your pipeline any of it coming for uh, that eight year period like how does it work that is already over i think uh, for all the, all the three years all the three but okay. uh, the matter is sub judges because there are fine nuances attached to it that uh, when the market exclusivity should be over whether the market is ready to adopt it so there the matter is sub judice so i don't want to comment on it so whatever is the court's decision we will comply with it and how does the omc commission work yeah commission is it is a bilateral thing hmm. i mean it is between omcs and us hmm. we tell them that this is what we are spending in terms of giving the equipments they say we are this is what we are giving you the benefit so it's a mutual thing Okay, so right now it says a percentage of volume, say three and a half four percent is. I might be wrong. What would the number be here? I think it is more than that. More than that. In the sense that three four percent, you are saying about the margin. What are the commissions that you pay? Yeah, to? around maybe say five rupees forty paise. Is, uh, earlier we used to give four rupees five paise hmm. out of the sale price of let us say seventy nine rupees. Got it. So I don't know, maybe ten percent. <laughs> okay, yeah, of course, exactly. If, if Little it, less than ten percent. Yeah, if it is five rupees forty one paise, which is the current regulation by the government, so we are paying that amount. So which is slightly more than uh, that. Okay. So now let's talk about uh, what would the expansion plans here be? You recently made an acquisition. The street cheered that as well because for a long time people were wondering how will Manager Gas grow from here? Because uh, three geographical areas is where you function. You have now stepped into a volume growth arena. Uh, what are the growth triggers? You said 3.4 mm SCMD is the current volume number. Um, say five years down the line, what 
Could you double that number? And will you be looking at more acquisitions to do that? Uh, what will drive growth for Mahanagar Gas from here? See, the growth uh, is a function of demand picking up and also the affordability of customers on whatever fuel we are, options we are giving it to them. So organic growth was limited because with the 11th round coming up, there was hardly any, uh, any new round, which any new good city which is coming on the block. So the other way to expand is to go in organic way, which we were scouting several opportunities. And fortunately for us, Unison Enviro was a right fit in terms of potential to grow as well as the valuation and the contiguous na nature of our geographies as well as the MWP, the minimum work program which they have committed is more sensible and reasonable. So we went in for that and uh, it went into our place. Now the SPA is signed, which is called a sale purchase agreement. However, there is a five year lock in period from the regulator side which is getting over in September this year. So in October or November, we will get this area. So if you see about the volume around 0.1 mm SCMD they are taking, and it is expected in another seven to eight years, we can uh, roll those numbers to around one mm SCMD. Okay. And, and our own growth is growing at the rate of five to 6% CAGR. And if everything goes our way and we are doing several plethora of steps to see that these numbers are maintained or bettered, so if we go to 7 to 8%, then I don't know, maybe five, six years, we'll be able to double MGL numbers and we are able to 10 times the current number of Unison. 10 times? That is 0.1 yes, to 1. Yes, to 1 MMS. <laughs> Although the base, base yes, is so low. So, so low, so, right. Yeah, yeah. No, but 10 times would not be bad if you're able to, you know, uh, scale up your current acquisition. Any Anything else in the kitty? You spoke about not enough geographical areas being in the kitty. Uh, CNG is one part, getting new geographical areas is one part. Any other segments you would be looking at? We were talking about these yeah, newer yeah. energy or new energy areas. Right. People are talking about setting up EV charging stations. People are talking about getting into hydrogen. Your peers have done that. Yes. Uh, is Mahanagar Gas looking at getting into another field at all? Absolutely. I mean, see the future is that we need to develop a vertical, which is uh, at least maybe say 25% of top line and bottom line, maybe seven to eight years down the line. So that is the broad vision which we have. Now, what are those areas? Some of those areas which you mentioned is hydrogen because the National Green Hydrogen Mission Government is coming out with some regulation and they may mandate maybe three to five percent of blending in CGD network also. So we should be ready with that. Correct. Therefore, we are talking to several parties and uh, maybe we enter with MOU of, with, with some of them. The other part is LNG in long haul which we have recently uh, entered an MOU with. I don't know if you are aware of it. Badinath LNG is one of the pioneer companies in India who, have, who were the company who laid first two stations in India for LNG dispensation. So we have signed an MOU with them and we would like to increase our footsteps on uh, footprints on the LNG sphere. The other is compressed biogas. Maybe very recently we are talking to BMC to sign an MOU with them and put up a biogas station, uh, plant in Mumbai itself. The others could be uh, electric value chain also we are exploring, that if there is a right fit, because electric value chain is crowded. There are automobile companies who have OEM sphere, there are electricity utility companies, right, who have the electron advantage of what molecule advantage is there in the gas industry. So there also charging station is again Depends. If you are getting the electron from th some other company, there is hardly any margins available on that. So we have to s look at it from a diff all bigger perspective. And lastly, we are also looking up for some integration in the upstream side okay. of CGD manufacturing. Okay. So anything like dispenser or type four cylinders or meters or things like that. Big plans in place, 25% of the top line and bottom line yeah, in next couple of years. That's a plan. Like, yeah. that's, uh, your investors will be very happy to know that for sure. Um, let's talk about EBITDA because you know what happened? We saw record high gas prices last year. We did see a relief coming in with the Kirit Parikh Committee's recommendations. Yeah. You have passed it on to your customers as well. The entire pass on has happened from Naha Mahanagar Gas. Your FY21 EBITDA per unit was really high. It was at a record high as well, around 11 rupees. That's right. Um, can, if at all you plan the future in terms of segments, you think you can get back to those levels or that was a one-time EBITDA? What would the normal EBITDA be for the next four or five years with Unison also getting integrated? 
Yeah, I mean, there are two, three aspects to the EBITDA margins for HCM when we talk about it. That one is that how much profit you want to earn, this is how much volume growth you want to earn, right? So last year, we saw that when the domestic gas was at a very high prices, so $8.5 per MMBTU and had this Kirit Padek committee recommendation not expect, accepted by the government, it would have uh, gotten up to maybe $10 per MMBTU, which would have been really painful for the CGD companies. So government in very nice gesture, they have come down with this floor and ceiling part. Now the EBITDA is a function of what is the alternate fuel cost, how much we can charge the profit we want to earn and the volume we have in future vision, what is the volume growth. So as soon as we reduce these prices, two and a half rupees in February, I think we were the only company yes. to reduce you two are. and a half rupees then. And we are the high company which gave the highest margin pass on during the Kirit Parikh recommendation rupees. also. So putting together, we have reduced 10 and a half rupees. So after this reduction has done, we have seen say uptick in the conversions also. So that is the balancing which we need to do that. Now you talked about 11 rupees or slightly more than 11 rupees beta margin. So we are not for it. We don't want to do it. That might have happened because the uh, domestic gas were dirt cheap that point yes. of time. Whereas last year we had eight and a half rupees beta. This year we are nine and a half rupees. So eight to 10 rupees, barring that one year perhaps, we have been doing our business in that range. And we expect to continue in that range. So you've told us so much, right, in terms of your expansion plans, what are the new um, areas you would be looking at? Uh, generally, what is the capex that you're looking at, say, next two to three years down the line when you talk about expansion or maybe acquisitions um, and getting into the new areas? And uh, will, it, will you require to take some debt for that? Is it mostly maintenance capex that you take every year? Uh, what is the outlook here? Normally, we have been doing around 600 to 700 CR per year. And that's the trend we are expected to go up. But some of these investments which we talked about, then that number may increase slightly more than that. So uh, the treasury surplus is around 1500 CR, which we have currently. So the unison acquisition, which is around 530 CR, is expected to come from treasury surplus. Otherwise, if you see, we earn PAT of 790 CR. We have a depreciation of 250 CR. Mm. And we paid dividend of 260 CR. So on cash basis, dividend and uh, this uh, depreciation null nullify each other. So we have around 750 to 800 CR available in our cut kitty for doing the capex. Thank you so much, Mr. Singh, Thank for you. joining us here and explaining everything about Mahanagar Gas. Okay, with that, we'll take your leave on this edition of Deep Dive on Inside Out. Back to you in the studios. All right, that was a deep dive into MGL. But time to slip into a short break. When you come back, we'll focus on another interesting stock. Control Print is the stock on our Swatlight segment. Stay with us. <laughs> 